By this time, you should have a pretty good idea of how to evaluate your blood sugars. This is very important, but blood sugars are just one piece in the puzzle. You can also learn a lot by testing how well your pancreas is functioning. The pancreas is a six inch long gland that sits behind your stomach. It's responsible for several important tasks. The pancreas secretes digestive enzymes to help you absorb your food. It also secretes several hormones, one of which is insulin. Insulin is produced in the beta cells of the pancreas. As we've learned before, when blood sugars rise, a healthy pancreas responds by secreting insulin, which allows the sugar into the cells. This stabilizes your blood sugars. People with type 1 diabetes have damaged beta cells that no longer produce insulin. People with type 2 diabetes still produce insulin, but their cells are resistant to it. This forces the pancreas to work extra hard. Over time, it can become fatigued and damaged. When this happens, type 2 diabetes can eventually become more like type 1 diabetes. If you have diabetes, it's important to evaluate how well your pancreas is functioning. Let's look at some tests that can help. Testing insulin levels. You can learn how well your pancreas is functioning by testing the amount of insulin in your blood. As long as you aren't taking insulin injections, your natural insulin levels can reveal how hard your pancreas is working to control your blood sugars. A person with type 1 diabetes will have very low insulin levels, even after a meal. This means that the pancreas has been damaged. A person with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes may have really high insulin levels, especially after eating. This indicates that the body is resistant to insulin and the pancreas is overworking to make up for it. Unfortunately, all this extra insulin is dangerous. Did you know that high insulin levels increase the risk for several diseases, including heart disease, hypertension, obesity, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, infertility, and the list goes on. That's another reason why it's so important to battle insulin resistance. As you work to overcome it, you will decrease your risk of many diseases, not just diabetes. The fasting insulin test measures your insulin levels after not eating overnight. It can be measured at the same time as your fasting blood sugar. This test is only effective for people who aren't taking insulin injections because injecting insulin would alter the results. Here's what your fasting insulin level means. A level of 10 or higher indicates insulin resistance and significantly increases your risk for disease. A level below 7 is much healthier and below 5 is excellent. Remember, this is a fasting level. Insulin levels should naturally fluctuate depending on blood sugars. If your insulin level is low when your blood sugar is high, that's not good because it means your pancreas isn't producing insulin when you need it the most. If your fasting insulin level is high, don't despair. The strategies you learn through this course can increase your insulin sensitivity and bring those levels back down. The two-hour insulin test shows how your pancreas responds to glucose. Sometimes a person's fasting insulin level will be normal, but their two-hour level will be very high. Sugar in the blood can make insulin levels rise dramatically. The two-hour test mirrors how your body responds to carbohydrates in your meal. This test can be taken at the same time as the two-hour glucose tolerance test. Your blood will be drawn two hours after you drink a sweet glucose drink. Your two-hour insulin level should be less than 25, although less than 10 is optimal. A level above 25 indicates insulin resistance. C-peptide test. When someone develops diabetes, it's important to know if it's type 1 or type 2. 
One way to determine this is insulin testing. But sometimes people are prescribed insulin without knowing what type of diabetes they actually have. The extra insulin from their injections will skew the results of an insulin test. This problem can be solved by taking the C-peptide test. C-peptide is a protein that the pancreas releases every time it releases insulin. The level of C-peptide corresponds with the level of insulin released. By measuring C-peptide, it's possible to identify how much insulin the pancreas is producing, even if someone is also taking insulin injections. The C-peptide test is usually used to identify whether someone has type 1 or type 2 diabetes. A low level indicates type 1 diabetes, while a medium or high level indicates type 2 diabetes. There's also an experimental new way to use the C-peptide test. Since the test measures how well your pancreas is functioning, it can also reveal the extent of your pancreatic damage. This can actually reveal what your long-term chances are of being able to control your blood sugars through lifestyle alone without the need for insulin. To perform this test, your blood will be drawn an hour after drinking a glucose drink or eating a carbohydrate-rich meal. Here's what the results mean. When measuring C-peptide one hour after sugar intake, a level under two nanograms per milliliter indicates severe pancreatic damage. Although lifestyle interventions can still improve health, most likely there will be an ongoing need for insulin. A level between two and four means that the pancreas is damaged but is still functioning. At this level, there's a 50-50 chance that someone can address the problem through lifestyle alone. A C-peptide level above four means that the pancreas is functioning well. A person at this level has roughly a 95% chance of eventually being able to control their blood sugars with no insulin or other medications. It's important to note that these guidelines are experimental, not official, but I believe they are valuable. But remember, don't make any changes to your insulin or medication regime without consulting your doctor. Even if your pancreas is functioning well, you may still need extra insulin for the time being. I've found that many of my clients gain a lot of hope from the C-peptide test. I still remember Nathan, a 76-year-old man who came to my office with extremely high blood sugars, sometimes as high as 500. Nathan had already had a stroke and several heart attacks. His prognosis didn't seem very good. Even though he was injecting insulin several times a day, his blood sugars were still out of control. Nathan was ready to just give up hope. But I still remember the look on his face when I explained to him what his C-peptide results meant. His level was over five. This meant that his pancreas was actually functioning well. If Nathan would take the health program seriously, he had an excellent chance of reversing the disease and eventually not even needing any medication. Are you joking, Nathan said? You mean to say that even though I'm so unhealthy right now, I could actually undo this thing? I encouraged Nathan to give it his best shot and that's exactly what he did. Within a few months of a healthy diet, a strong exercise program, and other lifestyle strategies, Nathan's blood sugars had stabilized and he was no longer on insulin. And all this started when Nathan gained hope from a C-peptide test. The good news is that the vast majority of people with type 2 diabetes have fairly high C-peptide levels. This means that if they take aggressive action to address their health, they have a really good chance of eventually controlling their blood sugars without medication. 
for the smaller percentage of diabetics who have sustained more pancreatic damage. The C-peptide test offers a realistic expectation for what to expect in the future. Lifestyle strategies can still be powerful for improving health and reducing disease risk, but these people will still need to take at least some insulin in the future, and that's okay. I encourage you to talk to your doctor about having your insulin and or C-peptide levels checked. Don't forget to pay attention to your pancreas.